All right, guys, so we're out in the shop tonight. Uh, got a new project in mind. Want to cover, start covering this wall with some pallet boards. Uh, might be a lot of work, but I got a lot of pallets. I got some sitting over there. I got this stack here. I got more outside that way. And there's always more to grab from work. So eventually it would be cool to cover this whole wall, starting with just this wall. Uh, not sure exactly how high up I wanna go yet, how carried away, it really all depends on how much effort it's gonna take ultimately to bust all these down. Um, so we'll see, let's, uh, I got the Sawzall battery charged up here. Got some spares on the charger over there, so let's get after it. Alright guys, this is what we got so far. Uh, unfortunately the GoPro died in the middle of filming that last little time lapse. But we got a pretty healthy stack of wood right here so far. A couple more pallets left, I got a couple more outside. But the rack is pretty full right now. So I think tomorrow or the next time I'm out in the shop, we'll take some of the, we'll take this poster down over here and the ladder and we'll start knocking together everything on that wall get her get her moving along uh man i just got a con this sawzall blade i don't know how well you guys can see that there i'm not sure what brand this is but this thing kicks ass man i cut everything with this let's see if i can get that off of there I uh, can't really see what brand it was. I should be able to figure it out, though. This thing, this thing is a monster. That thing just cuts like nobody's business. So definitely, definitely invest in a good blade that's worth its worth its weight in gold, I think. And a good Sawzall, too. This, this Makita, this Makita Sawzall, this thing just chews up everything. It's a it's a professional grade sawzall with two speeds and it's got the sky hook on it. It's the uh XRJ05 model. Freaking kicks ass. This thing hasn't let me down since I picked it up. So yeah. So this is what we got so far. Um we'll start knocking everything together up on the wall. I kind of got them all sorted by size here so far with not too concerned about the thickness we'll get a little just texture going on the wall once we start hanging boards and yeah it should be a fun little project getting some reuse out of these recycled skids that work just throws away they just throw away everything it seems so wasteful and it's hard for me to just let everything get thrown away all the time i'd like to you know do something fun with it and uh something productive and make the shop a little bit more welcoming you know this drywall just really isn't doing it for me so all right guys well thanks for tuning in and we'll uh we'll see you next time
Hey guys, so back out in the shop tonight, just checking in with everyone. Uh, so I made some progress since the last time I filmed anything. Uh, we were out in the shop last Friday, and uh, it just seemed like one of those nights where we really didn't need to film anything. We just needed to get to work and get some get some boards up on the wall. I see, you can cut around the outlet. And almost look professional, you know, maybe like we almost know what we're doing or at least uh, we're trying to create that illusion. So uh, I figured it's maybe a good time to go over basically how um, how I'm accomplishing what I got going on here and the reasoning, some methodology behind how I'm doing this project or what I've learned along the way, there's some things that I would do differently, some things that I wouldn't change. Um, just kind of tips and tricks and general, uh, just a general update on kind of where this project is at. So what I'm currently thinking is um, we're going to be going from about where you see the new 2x4 there. That's going to kind of be the header all the way across the room which is kind of what i was originally planning on i'm thinking it's probably going to turn out best if this little wood shelf here if we make that go away um i think we can relocate some some of the wood up there there's some stuff up there that really doesn't need to be up there i, I think it's just going to offer better lighting in general for the room and it's going to kind of accentuate what I got going on here with the old drinking station. Um, as you can see, you know, it's kind of dark in the upper corner. I'd like to get some more light on it. I think the sound would be better out of the speaker if it's got a more open room. And, and it'll just kind of tie the whole wall together. Like everything's going to look much better if we kind of just fill all that in with the pallet, pallet wood project. Uh, you can see back here, I've kind of never given anybody a full little tour here. So I built this little rack uh, earlier this year to hold my records and the, the record player. So it's, uh, it's an Onkyo. It's a turntable. Uh, it's a CP. Let's see, is that focusing? It's CP1116A. Um, thanks to Maddie Mox, I got a new little head here that he suggested for me. It's still an orthophone. Uh, so it's a pretty nice sounding head, but sounds better on the modern. Let's see, we got the UP, UP of Michigan there, upside down. Yeah, got some dust on top of there from drilling in the wall and whatnot. But we're almost there. But I think if that shelf comes down, that'll add to the space. Uh, you can see here, my grandma, she's been making, she's been making Christmas ornaments like crazy. So if you want a Christmas ornament. Hit me up in the comments. I got hundreds of them. Love to send you one hanging on your tree. Since we're probably not going to get to see much of our family this holiday due to the coronavirus. And, uh, you know, hopefully everyone's family is doing well because it's, uh, it's a serious deal. Some people, even I was skeptical at first, but eh, it's pretty freaking serious right now. So, anyway. This is what we're working with. I'm excited to, uh, man, the shop's a mess right now from moving everything off this wall, but man, does it look good for a bunch of free lumber and some free screws. Not exactly sure yet what the plan is with the door. I think, uh, I think it might look nice to, uh, I don't know, make some kind of border around the door here. I think I got some. I got a couple ideas floating around. Maybe drop in the comments. Tell me what you think. Might look good. I was thinking about moving this uh, Audi poster, sport utility poster. I think that should belong on the other side of the room. On the other side of this little door's got a little window in it. But uh, I was thinking maybe I got some license plates I dug out. Now I'm sitting on the XL2 here. I got a handful of different states that one's kind of funny there beep beep roadrunner california alaska 
Washington. Oh, the plate from my old A6. 2018 tabs there. A little Red Devil plate from Illinois. South Dakota. Another Oregon plate. Another California. Yeah, you get the point. Another Washington. Minnesota. Minnesota! But yeah, I think it might look neat to uh, take some of these guys. Kind of make a border across the top of the uh, door. Yeah, on the other side, but yeah, you get the point. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, Got to get some more pallets. I'm running low on the right size timber right now. But uh, man, she's really coming together. It's it's pretty cool. It's got some it's got some good texture and everything. So. Well, I'll try and get you guys set up on a, on a stand here and see see what the heck I can come up with for uh, showing you exactly my methodology while I'm screwing in the boards. Maybe I should go before. Let's let's take a second here. Maybe I should go over. Uh, so so basically, I'm not a, I'm not a woodworking expert, but or an expert of any kind at pretty much anything. I'm just kind of. Try my hand at whatever, and hopefully it works out. If not, I'm definitely gonna learn some. So I'm going with the like stair step method. This is kind of similar to what you do maybe when you're laying down flooring. Uh, you can see, I've got a gradual step all the way up. Pretty much, I'm gonna extend that two by four out, and then figure out what to do with the little corner piece over there. Um, and then, basically, you know, I'm just I'm working my way from this end down by the record player backwards up the wall just trying to keep the width of the boards the same and trying to keep them as level as possible minimizing the gaps in between them you know it's not perfect it's it's a rough it's rough work so the goal is you know this is a much better aesthetic than just the old drywall so it, and it looks honestly it looks pretty awesome for for free and just for slapping it together after a couple cocktails you know this is it's turning out pretty great so yeah we'll uh we'll screw a few more boards in here get you up close kind of show you exactly how i'm doing it and uh hope you enjoy it all right let's get after it okay so i'm gonna set this board right here uh basically what i'm looking for I know where the studs are, kind of based off where the nails are located in the sheetrock. Roughly an idea. That kind of gives me a rough idea. So I pre-drill, push nice and light. You don't want to go punching all the way through. Uh, just enough just to get through that board. And I try and catch like one or two boards every, you know, one or two studs for every board. I'm Depending on, depending on exactly where I'm going. So, so I pop a couple holes in there, and then just uh, grab the impact, sink that one in. Maybe a good time to mention uh, PPE for this project. I've been wearing gloves. Uh, as much as possible. You can kind of see it doesn't line up perfect there. Doesn't matter though. So we drove that in. Like I said, PPE for this project. I've been wearing gloves, uh, safety glasses, hearing protection. Um, I got some safety glasses here. They're just, you know, pretty basic Z87 bodyguards. Uh, we have them at work. Got a few pairs at home. These guys are Thunder 29s, uh, Howard Lay. Uh, just some, just some basic earmuffs. Uh, they do great. They're the nice pad on the top of my head. Great for when you're running the sawzall or the table saw or uh, chop saw. So yeah, basically other tools I've been using. I've been using that sawzall which we went over and uh, earlier. And then I got a DeWalt. It's actually my dad's saw here. Most of the stuff is my dad's. Uh, let's see this DeWalt. Uh, it'd be a it's a considered a compound miter box. 
It's got like 18 inch travel. Um, great tool. It's been awesome for so many years. This this thing is a pretty old school table saw, but it gets the trick done. And let me tell you, it cuts. It is freaking loud though. So that's why I'm talking about this here in protection. It's, it's a great idea. What is this thing? I think it's a... Let's see what it's, oh, it's a Rockwell. Sorry, the lighting is terrible, but it's a lock, Rockwell Model 10 motorized saw. It tilts and um, adjusts up and down. So it's not super old, but that's basically been the three wood cutting tools I've been using. I haven't really had to use anything else. Like I haven't had to use a jigsaw or anything like that yet. And then just drill on an impact. Um, so yeah, we just kind of keep working our way up the step, keep working our way back. And once we get to there, you know, then we kind of obviously, we're not gonna be going up anymore. So we'll just be, it's gonna be getting narrower and narrower. We'll take the shelf down and all right. It's gonna look awesome. All right, so it's a new night out in the shop. It's uh, actually Friday night. So we'll probably be out here late. Don't have to work tomorrow uh, where we left off. Kind of got our nice little stair step going and we had made the decision to get rid of the shelf here so i took the liberty clearing all these boards off of here uh, i'm gonna get them on the storage rack next door or in the next room over and then uh then we'll pull down these three little supports here probably take this fluorescent light here bump it up and then instead of having it plug in over here at the outlet i'm gonna wire it up to plug in uh, if you can see it up there where the solar light is plugged in it's not uh not the most professional wiring but it's safe uh it's just a, some extension cords and conduit eventually uh, i'd like to redo all the lighting once i get the ceiling finished in here do some actual nice conduit runs and get some you know uniform lighting going some leds some low uh you know low energy consumption lighting and then you know we can get some better illumination for the bar over here and all the uh bottles and growlers got on display it'll make everything look nice so yeah we'll see if uh see how this goes we'll get these uh supports pulled down and start finishing this wall off getting way beyond any expectation that a guy would ever have for a guy or a gal would ever have for the look of his shop. It's getting so pretty, you almost got to put epoxy on the floor or maybe some little racing squares or who knows, you know, it's, it's shining. It's kind of scaring me. Maybe she's going to burn to the ground. But it's uh oh darn it looks good i i'm proud i'm darn proud well, let's get at it let's finish the rest of it oh celebration drink at the end of this 
once we snip together the rest of this, it's gonna be great. This episode of Projects in the Shed is sponsored by Deschutes, the Hazy India Pale Ale. It's a good one. Never been to Bend, Oregon. Put yourself there. Hell of a spot. I've personally never been, but I've heard good things. This old house, one of my favorite shows ever. Man, this old house has got some houses with some characters and some cast with some characters. I gotta say, those guys are way smarter than I am than I am at woodworking. I don't just enough to be dangerous. Alright, that's solid. Oh, this boar has got major Peroni's disease on this end. She's got just a, a curve from... Oh, if your erection stays hard for more than four hours and has a curve like that, probably to the doctor. We're gonna have to do a circumcision on this board. Otherwise, it's just, she's, she's got too much of a left hook to her that she's not gonna... She ain't gonna fly, so. That's when it like gets going too hot. You gotta shut it down right now. <laughs> shut it down. I wanna burn the old hacienda down. I'll show you how it's done. You take 40 screws, or give or take, get them organized, and you jam them in your Christmas sweater. Like so, you head up the ladder. Fucking Santa Claus, climbing across the roof, looking for the right chimney. Get your ass up on that ladder. You just run them in deep, but not too deep. You don't want to bury them all the way through it. Yeah. We're gonna slide this wood all the way to the other end. Boy, howdy, she is gonna look good. It's looking nice already. Hot damn. Set 
the board. Grab the drill. Pop a couple holes in the board. Adjust, uh, adjust position as needed. Not every board is just going to hang right where you want it to. Sometimes you gotta poke some to stay in place. Sometimes you gotta search a little bit for your uh, studs if you're not trying to be perfect like me with the stud finder and all. 98% of the time, it's gonna hit the stud. Check that. Maybe 87% of the time. See, told you. Found it. Takes one or two here and there. Just sneak on over here. Sink the last one in. Move on to the next board. turkey and cut it up with a sawzall for Thanksgiving. Seems like the thing to do. I'm going to use a fresh blade, of course, you know. I'm not going to use the old blade. This is the toughest palette known to man and woman. My hand feels like it just came out of a candy cane factory. Oh yeah. This is the most insane palette I've ever attempted to cut apart. It's these blocks. They're just chewing me alive. And then, nothing. There's one. Got the uh, got the whole wall done now. 
We got a few things hung back up. Got some horns, stop sign. Yeah, it's looking pretty, it's looking pretty freaking good. So we're gonna, probably gonna move on to some other projects here once we get everything hung back up on the wall. I got the hand saws up on display. The old skidoo in the shop tonight. I put a new stutter in it with my buddy Ryan Kessler. Man, she fires right up now. Little view under the hood. It's a 700 Bombardier Rotax Triple. It's got a couple different toolboxes. This baby runs mint. I guess I can fire it up for you guys. I'll toss a choke on with the, the key quick. Pull the kill switch up. He fires right up, right now. It's a really good running sled. This thing, this thing is just unbelievable. It's so quiet. It's got tons of power. It does not like to jump. It's not a. Whoa. She's not a jumper, but it's a pretty good running sled. Yeah, we're gonna get back at it. We're gonna get back to the regular scheduled programming. We got some other plans for up in the shop to make it real nice, get it real insulated. The wood stove really utilized, maximize everything we got going. But yeah, super happy overall how things turned out. Looks great. It's gonna be here for years to come. All right. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed the video of making this pallet wall. Thanks for hanging out in the shed. We'll see y'all soon. We got some uh, got some plywood up there. We closed in two of the gaps that we had up at the very top above the pallet wall. And man, it really traps a lot more heat in the room. So it's it's great. It's you can you can definitely tell the difference when you walk in the door and everything's staying warmer over here. So that's just one step closer to getting the whole place insulated. It's great. Glad, uh, glad some friends came over and joined me in the shop tonight. We got a couple things done, we had some good times.